Hey guys, Aaron and Kara here, coming to you from Union Island. We're down here to learn to kiteboard. Uh, we're spending a couple weeks working on that, and unfortunately I broke my toe in the process. So that combined with a little bit of weather has us moving on down south. And before we moved, we just wanted to go ahead and introduce the next video. Hey guys, this is way back in the last hurricane season, and we are in Long Island Sound where we uh, take Vela up the East River through Hellgate and are there enjoying Long Island Sound until Hurricane Irma and then Jose uh, convince us that we probably should get back to somewhere more protected like the Chesapeake. But that's the video, so I hope you all enjoy. we left our temporary home in Staten Island and traveled up the East River through Hellgate to Long Island Town. Hellgate was once considered a dangerous and hazardous waterway. Its waters were in a continuous contention with those of Long Island Sound, causing whirlpools amongst the rocks, reefs, and islands. In fact, before the U.S. Army cleared multiple acres of impassable reef, in the 1850s, one in 50 ships passing through Hellgate were either damaged or sunk. For us in present day, the Hellgate currents made for nothing but a swift passage. But we did have water swirling around in whirlpools, which would flow over our rudder, causing us to turn erratically. That's the Electro Hydro Dam. Good cause too. There's a lot of current right here. Brother Island. Out of the East River and into Long Island Sound, we stopped in Port Washington for the night. In the morning, we had a welcoming committee come out to the boat and greet us. Hi guys, that's a funny noise. It is sound pretty funny. Y'all are big. I don't have anything for you, buddy. Y'all are gigantic compared to Texas swans. It's okay. I'm not gonna get you. Look how big those feet are. Yeah. The next day we hopped over to Oyster Bay and immediately fell in love. The harbor was super protected and the town was friendly and historical. We decided to stay here a couple weeks to thoroughly check out the area and work on some much needed boat chores. Aaron laying down on the job. I'm grown up now with three daughters of my home. I let them drive my old Jeep across the pasture at our home. Teak maintenance, an oil change, sewing bike covers, 
and lots of odds and ends were scratched off our never-ending boat tours list. The great thing about cruising is the ability to balance boat work with a bit of R&R &R or exploring a new place. And so we did all of the above. The 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt, called Oyster Bay home. He built and lived the majority of his life in a house a few miles away from town on top of Sagmore Hill. We toured his home, saw his hunting and presidential trophies, and experienced what life would have been like for the Roosevelts in the late 1800s. Beautiful planting fields former estate of, I think, Allen Cove. I may have to adjust that name. David Allen Cove? It's 400 acres. William Robertson Cove donated his Long Island estate to New York for use as a school of horticulture following his death. The grounds are immaculate and teeming with all different varieties of plants, flowers, and trees. We spent a bunch of time here relaxing in the garden, hiking through the forest, and stopping to smell the flowers. We're gonna do some hiking today. Yeah. It's slightly buggy here. Didn't do my face is the bad part. Looks oh, good. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a lot of bugs out there. At this point in time, in summer of 2017, a very active hurricane season was underway. Hurricane Harvey was hitting Houston, where we have friends and family, and kept Vela for nearly three years. And Irma was just beginning to form in the Atlantic. So we decided to make a quick trip up to Connecticut to see Bramford in the Thimble Islands and then we would hightail it to the Chesapeake where we felt a little bit more protected. Just a little lazy downwind sail. We're doing a blistering five knots and nine knots of wind and just slowly making our way over to Connecticut today. During the trip, we made sure our Texas flag was flying high. There are flies everywhere. from hell. Very cool. Bramford is a cute New England town where we tried our first lobster rolls. While the town had a big boating community, most folks left their boats in the marinas that were upriver, and the anchorage was largely unprotected from southerly winds. Our last night in Bramford, Connecticut. A really pretty place, but um, not much protection here, so we're gonna have to bail tomorrow when the weather gets nasty. Or I should say before the weather gets nasty. And that's why that is open to Long Island Sound right there. We're just approaching the Thimble Islands. These are the islands that are unique to this area of Connecticut. So apparently these are very similar to the islands that you would see in Maine. And since we weren't able to get up that far north this year, uh, this is a good chance to see what the countryside would look like. The Thimble Islands are made up of pink granite bedrock that were once the top of hills prior to the last ice age. There are between 100 and 365 islands, depending on where the line is drawn between an island and a mere rock. And although we didn't see any, the islands serve as a rest stop for migrating seals. 
our decision to turn around and start heading for the more protected Chesapeake was reinforced when we started seeing the spaghetti models for the predicted path and intensity of Hurricane Irma and then Hurricane Jose following close behind. We are just leaving the City Island Anchorage at Green Flats. We're heading for the East River, time our tide so we can get through the Hellgate. And just a really cool little area, this little that's Rat Island there. Off the bow in our port is Heart Island. Ooh. Did everything from an insane asylum to a tuberculosis ward, a potter, it's still a potter's field for uh, New York Department of Correction. It's a really pretty spot, nice place to wrap up our uh, visit to Long Island Sound. Head through the city, get in the great kills on Staten Island and see if we can figure out what's going on with Irma and Jose, the two hurricanes in the Atlantic right now, and uh, figure out when we're going to head down south to the Chesapeake. Barge. The Vernon C. Bain Maritime Facility, nicknamed the Boat, is a 625 foot long barge being used for an 800 bed jail holding inmates for the New York City Department of Corrections. The concept was to alleviate issues of growing inmate population by developing usable prison space away from densely populated neighborhoods. afternoon versus Sunday morning when we originally came up. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and click on subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And hope to see you guys again next time. My guess is if they've already watched the video this far, they've subscribed. But you can tell your neighbor to subscribe as well. That works. Thanks, guys. Bye, y'all.